So you're new to audio and half the stuff I say sounds like nonsense. Well, here's a video explaining what most of the crap I say means. Let's check it out. So I have my laptop here because I have a lot of notes. I don't really want to miss anything. I still might anyway because it's just kind of how it goes. But rule number one, M50X is bad. It's just bad. If you came from somewhere that told you M50X is good, it's bad. Uh, other than that, there's two main types of headphones. There's open back headphones like this, and there's closed back headphones. Now, most consumer headphones, your Sony's, your Bose, stuff like that, are usually closed back headphones, but open headphones have their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, closed back headphones are definitely gonna give you a lot more isolation for traveling. Usually they're also easier to power with some exceptions here and there, like ZMFs or something like that. But open back headphones usually offer a much more clear sound, much better sound stage, much better imaging, and overall less reflections coming from inside the cups. Now the downside of this is usually open back headphones roll off in the bass a little bit sooner. Now this doesn't count for planars for the most part, but it's just something to note. Now I show graphs like this a whole lot. And there's a whole bunch of different standards for measuring graphs, and they're all going to be a little bit different. There's no perfect graph out there. So take every graph you see with a grain of salt, but for the most part, you have your base, your mids, and your highs. So you guys probably all know what base and highs are, and mids are just everything in between, but you can kind of look at these graphs and get a bit of an idea of how something sounds. If it's higher on the graph, it's louder when you listen to it. And we can use this to identify the main basic types of sound signatures. Now there's more than this, but these are the ones you're going to hear the most. Warm, which are headphones that are a little bit elevated in the lower mid range and bass. This doesn't always mean they have more sub bass, but generally speaking, the mid range, the lower mid range is a bit more elevated. Cold, which is the exact opposite of this, they have a more analytical sound. You'll notice that this area in the low mid range and bass is going to be a little bit more recessed. Dark, which is where your treble area is going to be recessed or have more recesses in it. This isn't referring to anything in the mid range or bass. And bright, which is the opposite of that. Bright headphones, once again, not talking about mid range or bass, bright headphones have treble that is elevated or has peaks over the standard frequency responses of normal headphones. And then mid forward, which I feel like is pretty self-explanatory, it's just a headphone that has a big focus on its mid range. So another term you're probably gonna hear a lot is extension. This refers to either bass or treble. And if I say a headphone has good extension in the bass, it doesn't mean that there's more bass, it just means that bass goes deeper. Extension is how deep bass or how far up treble can go before they start rolling off and getting quieter. So a headphone with great treble extension can hit very, very high frequency sounds. A headphone with great sub bass extension can hit very, very deep notes. Like I said, it doesn't mean that those frequencies are louder, it just means they go deeper. Two other important terms that often get confused with one another are sound stage and imaging. Simply put, sound stage is the ability for you to hear how deep and big something sounds. A headphone with giant sound stage, usually open backs, will sound like you're listening to something that's not pressed right up against your head, but you hear sounds that are more out and in the room around you. Imaging is being able to determine where those sounds are coming from. So if you think of a big surround sound system and you hear something behind you, that's imaging, letting you know that that thing is behind you. Now that being said, surround sound headphones, for the most part, aren't usually very good. Some of them are okay, but if you want good imaging for either music or gaming, you're usually better off going with a good open back headphone that's known for good imaging. And power. So almost everything needs an amp, especially these things. They need a, a lot of an amp. And if you need that, you probably need a DAC too. Now I did a video here explaining sensitivity and impedance to determine kind of if you really need an amplifier or not. You can usually read these numbers in a headphone spec sheet. But for the most part, most good headphones need an amp and it honestly doesn't hurt your sound quality to have a good amp and DAC either. Now, amps aren't just to achieve higher volumes. Certain headphones will actually need higher voltage requirements, as well as the circuits that are pushing them generally have lower noise and will sound better than integrated sound chips built into computers. And the other bright side of that is that good amps are actually getting cheap and cheap amps are starting to get good. Now don't get me wrong, there are differences between cheap amps and expensive amps and the same thing with DACs, but these days you can really get by with some affordable amps like the Atom or the Liquid Spark. Which speaking of affordable amps and DACs, you should stick around and subscribe because I have a video coming out soon of the Mayflower Arc, which is a pretty affordable amp DAC with a lot of features. 
Oh, and on the note of subscribing, by the way, it looks like 72% of the guys who watch these videos aren't subscribed. So if you learned anything at all in this video, if you learn anything in the rest of it, you should subscribe because that would be awesome. Now, another note is that I don't just review headphones. I do other things besides that. So if you just want headphones, sorry, I do speakers sometimes and other random stuff across the board. But that being said, I'm a human and I have preferences. So you may find that my audio preferences might not align with yours. And there's tons of other great reviewers in this community. The big thing here is that music is subjective. You might like something that someone else doesn't and they might like something that you don't. Try and be respectful to others within the community and any other audio related community. Because the really important thing here is that we all love music and we're all enjoying it in our own way. A lot of people consider headphones in the sub $200 category to be your lower entry fi. Things above that and I'd say the $200 to maybe uh, $500 to $600 range is going to be your mid-fi and then things over that people consider hi-fi. And then way above that into the thousands of dollars people call that summit fi. But really that range kind of extends endlessly because there are some headphones out there that cost like $55,000. So there are some of the basics to get you started in the headphone world. I have a video coming out soon talking about my best picks from cheapest to most expensive for headphones in 2019. But that's pretty much all I got for you today. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below and a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, I have a Telegram chat, a Discord, and a community forum at forums.hyphaguides.com. And like I said, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.